with a plan to make it the first of many. A handful of entrepreneurs and philanthropists have come to Haiti with their own ideas about how to help the homeless. Doors here? No, no, no doors, doors there. there. Doors there. Okay, just a moment. Hey. J.P. Falsgaard Back is one. He made his fortune in telecommunications and is now sinking some of it into building prefabricated houses using local labor. JP is planning to build several small communities and sell the houses to Haitian families at subsidized rates with low interest mortgages. These tents are only temporary, even though I fear they will be there for quite a long time. Uh, but putting our house next to it, you can see what, what we should have done from the, very, from the beginning. It's very dark here, I might say. JP wants to unveil his house in less than a week. He's come to Elsie's camp looking for a family with an inspiring story to be part of his project. That, uh, when I was... Hey! <laughs> Is she born in this camp? Yes, yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Born here? Mm -hmm. Hi! JP! Hi! Nice to meet you. He's heard of Menji's survival for nine days under the rubble. Without eating and drinking. I had neighbors who lost 10 or 15 family members. By the grace of God, I had only one great pain. So I thank him after all. I feel that uh, I bonded <laughs> the way the little girl that came out of the rubbles uh, after nine days. And the mother, she, she's strong. She's strong. So I, I, I bless them, and uh, if they can be part of the program, I would be proud of it. Let's go in. It isn't long before JP gets a taste of what life in a camp is really like. He takes the opportunity to tell the family more about his plans. So where we build the houses, we will plant trees, because that's important for the shade and the, the way it looks. Uh, because we want to create a real village. I'm really glad that somebody understands the situation here and wants to do something about it. I'm glad somebody's seen how families are living in Haiti and, and has decided to help. Thank you. The torrential spring rain is just a foretaste of what the hurricane season may soon bring to an island frequently battered by natural disasters. At the children's shelter, it's an exciting day for Lynn Vanessa and the other children. A party of French adoptive parents has arrived. Their government has agreed their adoptions can go ahead as the paperwork is in order. Now some of the children can leave for new lives abroad. I'm sad, but I knew it would happen. Clevens is being collected by his new mother and father, Tony and Severine Cognard. They're preparing for the handover from his biological mother, Lucienne. Lucien believes Clevens will get a better life with the Conyards. They can get him many things that I can't get him. The things they'll do for him, I could begin but not finish. So if the child has this opportunity, then I can't take it away from him. It's taken the Conyards three years to get to this point, and they are convinced they are doing the right thing for Clevens. Yeah. 
On a vu que c'était vraiment voilà. son choix, que c'était euh, pas... réfléchi, c'était mmh. pas euh, comme ça, quoi. C'était vraiment c'était pour euh, nous. Et, ouais, forcé, ouais. Ouais. For Lynn Vanessa, it ends as another day of disappointment. No one has come to collect her. She was with a white person. Now she wants to stay with them. She thought it was her white mother. She's waiting for her day to go. Little Lynn Vanessa is one of five children whose father completed. If we can get a judgment, then her mother will come and get her. All the children await the arrival of their adoptive parents. For Clevens, it's time to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm happy, but I'm sad too. Okay. Thank you, Lucien. Thank you for everything. Clevens is one of an estimated 500 children who will be adopted to France in 2010. 300,000 children remain destitute and homeless in Haiti. The immediate response to the earthquake was huge. But the United Nations says that by July, less than 2% of the $10 billion pledged to help rebuild the country had been received. And a US Senate report accused international donors of squabbling over how to spend the money and criticized the Haitian government for a lack of leadership. One and a half million Haitians remain displaced. But Elsie is about to become an extremely rare exception. I'm getting ready to go out. I'm going to see something very special for us today. The family have been invited to the launch of JP's housing project. His first house is nearly ready, and he started on the next one. He's got plans for Elsie's family, too. We, we need a family as the number one member of the community. If we only present a house and a concept, it's remote, and, and people will not kind of engage themselves in, in the dream. So I like to put a family, if they want, up there as an example. This what you can. This is what you can achieve. <laughs> you made it. Good night. <laughs> we have Elsie and her children, and they are going to be the first members or residents of our new community. Hey! Yeah, let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Bobby? Now! <laughs> so that's the house. JP has decided to donate the first house to Elsie. Buying it would be well beyond her means. In the absence of a government reconstruction plan, schemes like this offer some tangible signs of regeneration, albeit for only a few. It's a day full of surprises. 
It's the first time since the quake that I can laugh like this without fear, seeing my children dancing. <laughs> I feel better even though there is a hole in my heart. There's an empty place in my heart because my little one is not here. But I can feel some joy. There is another life after all. Six months on from the earthquake, much of the world is looking elsewhere. And, if only for a few moments a day, so is a youth of Port-au-Prince. Wismond is watching the World Cup with his brother. My brother hasn't come to my church yet, but I hope that one day he will. <laughs> I love him. I love him. And he loves me too. At current rates, it will take 20 years to clear the streets of Port-au-Prince. Until international agreement on how to allocate reconstruction funds is reached, Haiti's long-term recovery remains stalled. But against the odds, some survivors are making progress. Amongst the rubble, there are signs of revival and hope. It's the reopening of the new Victorian school, and Rommel is back on his feet. Look at that. Bonjour, les enfants. Cool. Very nice to see all the children here, and it looks like a new beginning. I'm glad everything is going to be okay. The rubble has been cleared by hand, and classes will take place in the courtyard, while funds for rebuilding are raised. I forgot my cane. I'm walking without it. Rummel's got ambitious plans for the school and its next generation of pupils. It will take more than an earthquake, much, much more than what we had to keep me from being in Haiti and from working with these children both to give them an academic education and a music education. You just don't give up. Things will work out no matter what happens. Later tonight, BBC Two reports on Chechnya's stolen brides, kidnapped then married to strangers. That's here after Newsnight at 11.20. Now, spectacular landscapes with stories to tell as we take a trip from Glasgow to Edinburgh via the highlands and islands in coast.